Hello there. So, now we're using Gorilla Filler. Expanding foam. Seals and fills. You get this little nozzle, you go round, and round here, this little gap here, all the way along the borders, and then it expands, and then you go round and you cut it, once it's expanded, so that you've got like a nice flush finish up to the edge. We saw Self Built Stories do it. I think that's the only channel we've seen do it, but I'm pretty sure they've done their research. And so we thought, well, we might as well do it as well. So there you go. We're gonna get on with that now. The biggest tube in the entire world. I don't know if it's doing it justice. It's like my hand to my elbow nearly. Screw that on like that. Apparently you don't need a lot. Oh, look at that, there it comes. Why did that come out so much? What the f Must have got stuck. Oh my god, I need to clean that up. What? Always have blue roll at the ready. Yeah. How long does it take for this little stuff to start expanding? I could have filled up the whole van. I just saw you run in here. <laughs> I just saw you run in here with the blue roll from the bedroom. I was like, if he spills coffee or anything in this van, I'm going to thump him. No, no coffee. No coffee spilling. What spilling. Happened? It was going so well. It was coming out so nicely. And then suddenly it just went... <laughs> boom, and it just came out like an absolute motherfucker. It's like it... it, it um, I don't know whether I'm... Oh, am I using the wrong lever? Maybe I'm gonna use that. What were you using? I was, I was using that, but it just, oh, maybe well, I'm gonna well. shake it. You wanna know, shake it first? Yeah. Oh, you did, okay. But maybe you need to shake it in intervals. Yeah, it's coming out, keep going. Do a little bit more there, here. This controlling's back at it again. Do you think we've got a dud cat? Like... I don't know what's going on, it's not coming out <clears> very <throat> nice. Yeah, that's a little, oh god. See what I mean? <laughs> Why have you started there, by the way? I just thought it was a good position to like, like flush it in for me. I mean... Get the just, tool. Just, what tool? I don't know, a tool that can like get it in there. Look at that neat line. Mm -hmm. Alright, stop pressing. <sighs> that's it, did it? <laughs> that's gonna be massive. The, what, the, what are you talking about? That's gonna be massive. Wow, that was go. so good. Oh. Get over here right now and look at this. Look at that. That was our best out. bit there. We went. We're going to time lapse now. Time lapse a go. Other things that have happened is that but when we were testing this floor and we had it all laid out inside but not bolted down, this was coming up like super flush and we had it flush. Now it's coming up flush here, but then it kind of comes out a bit right at this end bit here. Uh, you can kind of see it's like flush over there and it comes out a bit and then flush here and then comes out a bit. What I've done is, is I found this trim on the router. As per the last video, SJ was sanding and it's called a flush piece. Right, so it's got this little circle on the top. Is it actually called that? Yeah, it's called a flush piece. So it's not, it's not like we're just makeshifting this to work for this. This is actually designed for this, okay. I think. So it's got this little circle on the top. The circle runs across the baton, and then anything that's above the baton, like if it's protruding out, should be sliced by this in line with what your circle is at the top. That's the theory. Now, I've never done this, nor's SJ, but I've done what? 20 minutes more routing than you have, routing than you have. So you still got that makes it. me the expert out of the two of us, which means that I'm the one that's doing the routing, I'm the one that's doing this. So if I end up going into our floor and creating a big old gash that needn't be there, it's me that's gonna be in trouble. We, we screwed up the biscuits, 
Can we screw up the routing? Watch this space. I don't know how we. I don't know how we imitate it and test it. Well, I could put a bat in here and then a piece of wood on top of it on the worktop. I think we should test it. I think we should test it. I think you're right. I've got two little test pieces here. I've got the nine mil ply and a baton. All right. So technically speaking. <laughs> So I'm so, so glad that we didn't do that because that, that, that's what it's going to do all the way along. And so we don't, we, ooh, we don't want that in our side, so. Sorry, bruh. Yeah. Standing. 50 mil. 50 mil. 50 mil. When we know what's going on, we'll report back to you. Back to you. Right, stand on that. Don't let it move. I'm rooting with a twist. Rooting with a twist? <gasps> I think I moved my foot. I might have moved you out a couple mil. This is good for the old plies. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is, <laughs> should we just go? <laughs> I don't know, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the way you're going to do this. Right? <laughs> we just need to measure like 49 now or something. 51, isn't it? So the idea to get closer to the thing you need to route, basically what we're doing is skimming the edge. I think he explained that. The key is to go bigger than the number you started with, not smaller. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty now. Oh yeah, sweet, you did it. You did it. That looks awesome. That's been routing for dummies. Pretty happy with that. Now it's time to move on to the step slash cubby, but we had done a few days work on this already. So we're gonna jump into the past and show you some previous footage of where we got to so far. All right, let's see how long it takes us to get this table saw out there, shall we? Didn't take too long. Two. So small and dizzy. I don't know what that's for. I know we want the chop saw first. What was this for? <laughs> I can't remember what I wanted the table saw for. But yeah, that, you would do this, I'm pretty sure. And that just lifts up. Sounds like someone's having a good time. Anyway, get that off. I can't remember why we needed that, but we do need it for something, I'm pretty sure. Here it comes with the chop saw. Now, does it fit? That does go in line, I just haven't pushed it up. We haven't got, done our floor yet, okay, so. Yeah, I like that. That's sweet. That looks cool as well from the top. Not that you're going to see it, but it will give us a good lip because we've, I've ordered the uh, <laughs> trim. Literally I like the in. strip of yellow as well. It looks cool. It's like a little bit of sunny gym showing. Step two. Now it's time to figure out the table saw. The table saw. Table saw. Table saw. Table saw. Wow, that is a thick blade. What was it? Two mil? Yeah, two mil blade. No way. This side is going to be our finished side, so we need that this side to finish on nine. Yeah, at the moment we would get we would be taking eleven mil off, so we need to come two mil back in. You go to eleven mil on the table. Yeah. Wow, my brain is working so good. Are you sure it's solid? Now? Yeah. Right, go. <laughs> it makes a really cool noise, like a bell. That was not easy. Way too small, wasn't it? Yeah. Doesn't go down to the lip at all. We need it to just not have that much shaved off. Which is like why I wanted to just maybe saw it. I just think sawing it will be gash. It won't, it'll be like a nice thin line. And you can cut a straight, I can cut a straight line, I can follow a line with a saw. Sure. Then you just sand it. Is that? Look how much we've taken off. Yeah, how do we manage that? I mean, it's supposed to be nine mil. That's like <laughs> a centimeter. It's like, well, it's like, like eleven mil. Man on a mission. We've decided we're taking some measurements and we're going to do the next strip without coming back and doing more measurements because we've got to do that little underlip bit. 
37.4, 2.3mm in. All right, we won't bore you with the rest of the measurements. So after a lot of brain work, we've come to this conclusion. We started with this. No, nope, we, we, nope, <laughs> we drew the wrong shape. We drew the wrong shape. That is not how it's looking. That is the shape. And it's all because here we have like a notch underneath that's like metal. Like that, like that, and like that. That's the shape we're trying to do. Get around this metal bit. Okay. With all these fancy tools that we've been using, we've decided to go back to basics. Just realised we've been saying 2.2 mil as the thing is. It's nice. 22 mil. 2.2 centimetres. And we'll get it right one day. That's the cut, that's the shape. That's the shape. It looks wrong, but uh, it's right. Which one do you want to use? This one or is this one? Go for that one. I don't think this is meant to cut this sort of stuff. But I wanted a fine line. It's really good for insulation. Let's just use this. <laughs> okay, use the wood saw for the wood. I've just thought of a better tool that will work. The multi-tool. It's like a sorry, jigsawy thing. Yeah. Well, she's determined to use this multi-tool, so I'm letting her, but utter accuracy. Okay. Pretty good. I'll that was admit. amazing. Well done. That's our quickest turnaround of a piece of wood. <laughs> I should hope so. Look at the size of it. Look at that. We did it already. Yay! Let's go, let's go see if it fits. Oh my god, does it fit? Da, 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 da. No, it's a bit too short. Oh my god. Didn't account for how thick the metal was. Yeah. I think we've got to come down a bit. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. You weren't on the line. Back to the multi tool. So we're playing with David's router here and I'll show you what we've got planned. We've got these things which means that it basically rocks on it. So we planned to mark that and then route a long piece in the back so that it should sit flush. And then we're going to screw to the wood and then glue to this. And then we've got a nice light gap here, yellow gap that sits on this lip which we have worked out gives <coughs> gives enough room for the step to come up if we ever needed to get that up so the plan is coming together so after a painful but fun half an hour we worked out that we can route this line and that, and that is to fit over these um metal ridges that i showed you before it's not easy using a power but we did but we did it so this was our test piece and now we actually otis is going to do it on the real piece now i've been doing this See that nice routed line in there? Made an absolute hash of it on this one. As you can see, it's an absolute disaster. It's I think like that was my fault though. A bigger bit here where we didn't make the measurement right, but it's never going to be seen. It's just to be glued on. Also, doesn't that look like someone's just gone? Aah! That was my first time routing, by the way. Look at the state of that. <laughs> it worked. Uh, the reason why we did the routing like that, this bit sticks out. It's like all the metal oh, work yeah. is flush, except for that bit there. And then there's this stuff which we've also made our line for. You did it. Yeah, so that it goes up real flush against it. Look how thin it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's honestly the thinnest thing you've ever seen in your life. I had to set the router at four mil and this is five mil ply. <laughs> Unbelievable. 5.5. .5. I've been sizing up our step solution thing. These are the cuts I need to make. The lines are obviously a lot straighter than that, but we've put some masking tape over to protect it. We're using this dandy new tool, table saw. This is nerve wracking because the depth between our step and where the ply overhangs is 16.2 centimetres. So if I make it 16.1, there'll be a gap. So it has to be 16.2. And creating those accurate, 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 accurate cuts is a pain in the bloody bottom. I tell ya. Let's see how we get on. Let's give it a go. Right, well, the moment of truth is, it's way too thin. Huh? It's way too thin. Come on. Do it all over again. Doesn't fit. Too small. 
all of this time this is the problem though you lose time doing this it's so much time consuming making measurements going and getting it cut and then not having it cut the right size it's ridiculous it takes freaking ages all right so a bit of premature board fitting moaning because there's a gap here because we haven't fit the ply down so when i actually push the gap down push, push the ply down a little bit it does actually fit Got to make some notches down there, but it does actually sit on. Maybe not snug enough, but it fits. So I think first things first is we're going to just keep going with this bit. This has got to go all the way over to here, all right? So what I've got is this fancy contour tool, which I've lined up over there. So I've got to line it up against this edge here, and it's giving me this shape, which then. If I line this up, I've got to line up that back edge. Like this bit doesn't matter because it's going over the top. So I'm just able to do it bit by bit. It should in theory give me the first bit of my notch that I need off, which is this bit that then will underhang down there. This might be the most complicated box we've got to make. Everything else should be pretty simple boxes. Kitchen worktops, sofa. The bed might be a little bit hard because we're working with these weird ass side flares. If I had a confidence scale of my woodwork, it's currently like down here. So every single project that we get through, hopefully my confidence will be going up in this little nice little bar and it'll be going do 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 Right, let's do these contour lines. Enough freaking talking. I'm just procrastinating at this point. Yes, I am even going as much as to clamp this thing down. That is not a sharp enough pencil. It's not the best, but it'll do the job now. See, to me, oh, okay. So that's, that's what it's telling me to cut off. Remember that little bit of metal? I didn't know what tool to use for this, but I was, good. I was thinking I was gonna just jigsaw and see how we get on. I'm not sure I'll get the jigsaw in if I do that. You know us over on this channel, we are novice FM, but getting the job done. Might not be pretty, might not be perfect, but we will certainly give it a good go. Uh, I wasn't able to create the little knot, but oh well. SJ just told me to uh, move the jigsaw. I'm not sure what the big issue is. It's not like there's just a blade hanging out ready to cut off her toes. You're the worst at that. It's like so many of your blades here. Moved it. Okay, we're running out of battery, but first attempt. It kind of goes in and it stays in, but there's too big of a gap there. I'm a bit annoyed that I didn't create a circular bit around the rubber there. Other than that, it fits pretty perfect. This could be a bit closer to the baton over there as well. What I'm thinking is, number one is, is that I should have made a cardboard cut out first, got the cardboard fit as my like etching and then use the cardboard to transfer to the ply so that I got it right first time rather than cutting this perfectly to size fretting about it being the right mill at the top only to screw up the incisions that I've had to make I've learned my lesson and now I know that when I'm doing fiddly bits like that to do a cardboard cut out first hopefully I'll start speeding up with this stuff as well I'm also going to look up other people's and see how flush a finish theirs are and see if I'm being finicky and pernickety anyway I'm now, gonna be like we've got to work on this cubbies, these two cubbies, so then we can get our lino down. I would do it exactly it's, it's, it's as you've got it there, but then make two. that little divot plush. Yeah. Is there any way we can um, do a little, make sure that that is going to be exactly that? Like, oh, tape, 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 um, that we want to make flush. So what I'm going to do is just tape. So none of that should get hit then. Um, it might need a little bit of a notch just because of these that all right get cracking then sir now some people might say that we are spending far too long on this step but we want we want it to be nice when we come in we want it to be like a nice finish not to be able to see this yellow or these black bolts down here I don't know. 
we're gonna probably spend the next hour yeah, figuring this out. See you later. Are you gonna make some cuts for me? Yeah. Are you gonna make some cuts for me? Yeah. I'm gonna make some cuts for you. Let's make some cuts together. Finally, we're getting round to some cuts. So let's cuts. turn my cap around. Past seven p.m. And All let's get to it. Figures. I don't think you should even worry about it. From here, it doesn't even look that bad. I think because we've been looking at it so up close. Look. What doesn't look that bad? The black thing. What black thing? The, the, the notch we're trying to cover. Like from here, it doesn't even look like you literally have to be like that to see it. Oh, it is. I just, uh, like, I just wouldn't even worry about it. I'm looking at it now and I'm just like, what's the even big deal? Can you hold it and you have a look? Now, after all that, after all of that deliberation, SJ said, we've got a time lapse of us just talking about this, by the way. That's all it is. <laughs> that's all it is. Well, that's it. After all of that deliberation for literally hours, trying to figure out how to cover that tiny little gap, which we've got no idea why we were fretting so much about, we have decided to just carry on with the rest of the step, get the battens done, get our little cubby made, and we're going to do that in the next video. So we will see you then. Say bye. His penetration was so fluid, she felt in ecstasy. This... We have a front door step! That's going to be our front door step. Feels really good. Now, this was a lot bigger, so it's getting smaller. I've got no idea where we're going. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week. Next time. Goodbye. Say bye. Bye.